What's good, my fellow viewers and my fellow demons? This is GinoTaku91 here, here to do yet another reaction video. Now today, I'm going to be reacting to a creepypasta reading of Toy Story 3 alternate ending. And this is the first time I'm actually watching a video of a narration of a creepypasta. So this might be interesting and would be very creepy and very dark and disturbing. So, without further ado, let's get on with the video in 3, 2, 1, play. Classic. This happened to a friend of a friend of mine. I honestly truly do. Oh, and this is the gameplay of the Toy Story 3 video game on Xbox 360. Then I could doubt it like the rest of you. Because even though this happened to me, even though there were witnesses, sometimes I'm not quite sure I believe in myself. It's the wails of my now four-year-old daughter at night that remind me that it did indeed happen. Katie had just turned three a couple weeks ago, before the incident. One thing I loved to do was to take her to the theater every few Saturday mornings for a kids movie presentation. It went from old classics like Snow White to recent Pixar movies. It was fun and enjoyable, and that way Katie mingled with other kids her age who loved the same movies. At the time, Katie was literally obsessed with anything related to Toy Story. We had all three oh, movies on the I always loved Toy Story. I always thank God I love those movies. I always do love Toy Story. Uh, Toy Story scene, 4 you know, was fine. I I, I kind of enjoyed it. It was okay. I just thought that to Toy Story 3 should have been she was the of definitive the end, two. but so I, I don't know. They just decided to just, just keep making more. The bad trucks away in the middle of the night. Honestly, these dolls were a blessing. So when I found out Toy Story 3 was being shown at the kids' theater, I jumped on the occasion. Even though Katie had seen it countless times before, there was nothing like watching on the big screen, and I knew she'd be ecstatic. The show was supposed to start at 8 a.m., but it didn't start till 9. It wasn't so bad since the kids were having fun together. Some parents left frustrated, but I stuck around. As did about a half a dozen other mothers and one father with their kids. The theater employee apologized and offered us free candy. Oh good, who refuses free candy? Yeah, it's a sweet I'll deal. I'll go into the cliche of stories like this and say See that what I did there? Normally. Because, well, it did. The intro was the part Katie liked the most, where Woody and Jesse chase the train, and Buzz saves Woody at the last minute. Actually, nothing off happened for most of the show. Once in a while, it would glitch, where the image would freeze for a second and then fast forward to catch back with the sound. Well, I noticed that the kids didn't care as long as they got to see their heroes in jumbo size. At the near end is when things got strange. Ooh, it didn't seem off here first. we go. I would soon find out as every other family in the theater would. There's a point in the movie where Woody and the toys end up at the dump after Lotso managed to drive Woody into a dumpster, and the garbage truck picks them up. The little pizza planet aliens get taken away by one of the trucks in the dump, and then Woody and his friends are carried onto a conveyor belt. The moment they hit the belt, the screen flickered and the sound jammed on a constant loop with the toys screaming when they fell. And then we got to look at the well-known blue screen of death with that awful screaming sound going on and on like a broken record. I always found the loopy, jumpy sound that comes with a blue screen of death disturbing. Hell, I always thought a scratchy record or CDT chattering eerie. Maybe it's because I used to have a computer that crashed on me every half hour and killed my files. It made me nervous. When the father burst into mocking laughter, I heard a nervous laugh too. The kids were confused, but for those who had just enough knowledge of computers, it was really funny. I have a friend who used to work at the theater, but he quit for another job around the time computers replaced people in the cabins projecting the films. I guess nothing will ever replace a good old human being. When nobody came to check on us, 
The father got up and left to ask someone to turn that thing off or restart it. Katie didn't seem phased by this, and then shrugged it off, waiting patiently. She was always pretty smart and mature, knowing she could watch at home anyway. Mm. The little boy was crying and the mother had to leave when the sound became ridiculously loud. It wasn't constant, that screaming sound, you see. The lower tone near whispering became loud enough to make my head buzz. At some point, Katie gave me a worried look as she clasped her hands over her ears. Before I made the final decision to leave, however, the screen went black, and an employee returned with the father in a flashlight, apologizing and let us know that they would resume the movie shortly. Apparently, they have been having equipment problems all morning. Shortly after the projector came back to life, the movie resumed a few minutes prior to the crash, only to crash at the very same spot a second time. Blue screen of death. Again. By then, the father and I were laughing. Don't get me wrong, we only paid $5 fee for entrance, but this was getting ridiculous. Seriously, the father exclaimed. This time, no one had to go get any employee. The screen flickered, and the movie started where it left off, almost immediately with a loud click, coming from the cabin up behind me. It reminded me of a gun as I clicked the safety off, and I couldn't help but look up at the beam of light. Might have been an employee kicking the machine back in gear for all I knew. As long as it something worked, tells me there is come to this point, maybe the theater is haunted or something. Gone. Watching it at home was a whole lot less troublesome. The movie seemed fine come this point, except for the sound. Like someone had put a pillow on the speakers to muffle it. Something else was odd, but I didn't notice what it was until Lotso betrayed the toys by not pressing the stop button of the bell or let them fall in the incinerator was their voices. Their voices were different. Not by a whole lot. Maybe the kids didn't notice, but I did. And I know the father did too, because we exchanged curious glances. They were similar, but Woody, for example, clearly wasn't voiced by Tom Hanks anymore. It's around that time that I felt something was really wrong. My stomach clenched painfully, and I felt my heart beat for drum roll. There was no reason for it. I had no explanation for the voices being different. Only the differences didn't just end there. If you've seen this movie as many times as I have, you know that while the toys eventually give up and accept their fate by holding hands and waiting for their death, oh, the light yeah. comes on. I remember and that. Paul hauls them out of the incinerator at the very last second. A lot of kids cry the during that the scene. First time. Do you know story. that if you remember that better. back then? Except they didn't know better anymore. The animation was fluid, but by now it wasn't right. Have you ever watched those old 1930s cartoons like Betty Boop, where everything always moves and never stops? A few years later, we figured out it was more natural to have stop animations because that's how we work. We don't notice it, but we stop between motions, grab a cup of coffee, stop, bring it to lips, stop, chug it down, stop, put it back down. Stop. It's subtle, but it made all the difference in animation when they realized that. And things started looking a whole lot less psychedelic from that moment on. Well, the animation on the big screen just didn't stop moving. Like those old cartoons. There was no stopping in between actions and motions. Like they sort of danced around everything in some way or another. And let me tell you, if you thought it looked psychedelic with 30s hand-drawn animation, computer animation makes it look twice as disturbing. That clearly was not like the movie I had at home, and it wasn't like the rest of the movie we watched at this point either. I noted the father looking at me again and I shrugged. I didn't have any more of an explanation than he did. I suppose it remained seated out of gross curiosity. As the saying goes, it's like watching a train wreck, and no matter how horrible it is, you just can't look away. There was none of the dramatic music I was used to hearing. In fact, there was no music at all. Maybe it just wasn't necessary. Imagery was enough. Already, I felt a lump in my throat, just watching the animation. I couldn't move, nailed to my seat. The claw saving the toys never came down. There was no heavenly light before a last minute rescue. There was no rescue. The toy screamed, and screamed, and screamed, an ear-shattering screech. Oh 
my god, that is... This is tense, man. The toys held hands which shrank as the plastic melted into a thick flesh-colored goo. I remember Woody's face the most. Because this is what the screen mainly focused on as they advanced toward the fiery pit in the middle. Black bubbles popped first in his cheeks, and his gaping mouth opened wider than it was humanly possible, his lips stretching to branch lens, until his whole jaw melted off at the hinges, leaving long, thick, liquid streaks of burning plastic behind. I was reminded of the way cheese strings were warm and melted, which forced a completely insane thought of laughter out of me. Cheese. What the fuck was I even looking at? The banshee light screeching escalated and escalated oh with the speakers all around us. It came from everywhere at once. My stomach cramped as despair ripped through me, and I thought I would collapse right there. I couldn't move. Glued to my seat, Woody's eyes rolled down his cheeks, like they weren't painted on him, but were real globes of substance, which burst like egg yolks, leaving gaping holes in place. Their eyes, all of their eyes, were the only thing that acted as real eyes, but not like plastic or fabric. Later I realized why. Eyes are the mirror of the soul. Eyes, even if they look painted, are always real. Always. And so, as they exploded into a liquid state, so did their souls, burning in the fiery pits of hell. It's silly to think that way of a cartoon character, but that's the only explanation I found for the God! I'm not sure it makes This is feel disturbing, better. guys! This is disturbing, yo! It just makes me feel worse. Woody's head had melted over his head and shaped it unnaturally, with it the fabric of his clothes caught fire in one burst. Crackled like some demonic laughter and burst into sparks, convulsing back. Except he didn't go far because his hands were fused with Slinky and Buzz's hands. The screaming was like the sound of pure hell, like something from a demon. The voices, though wrong, had sounded human until now. I felt a sharp pain cramped in my hands because I had been holding into the arms of my seat as though lifeline, and in some way, they were. The action kept me grounded because a part of me feared I'd end up in that pit and melt off as well if I didn't keep some of myself in this reality. Most of the footage focused on Woody, which got a glimpse of the others too. Toys like Buzz and Rex. Toys that were made exclusively of plastic, melted quickly, and a disturbingly colorful goo. Was no blood, just plastic melting, holding itself off, then bursting into flames. It was horrible and graphic. Maybe it was because you get to know these characters so well that you feel them alive. Despite their toys, Despite the seeing them being melted into nothing but plastic goo and everything is just that's really graphic, even for any standards of a you know. I've seen a lot of, to you know, do you ever Shouldn't melt army soldiers in your life? With me I scared. never had. It was my well, my maybe I did. I, I, you I'll get the point. This is just so life. disturbing. I'm listening the to this. The turned to wails. I was able to come out of my trance long enough to realize that the sound of crying and screaming did not come from the speakers anymore, but the people around me. There was nothing but the sound of the crackling fire from the pit around us now. The toys were dead, but the children alike, myself included, were the ones screaming and weeping. With a sudden burst of strength, I grabbed Katie in my arms and ran out of the theater. I didn't look back, though. I could now smell the burning plastic. It wasn't just stuck in my nose. It clung to my clothes and my skin, too. I thought I heard someone vomit behind me. I'm surprised I didn't. I know that the father had scurried past me. Then again, he might have been smarter than me enough before I did. He was yelling at the employee who stood giving tickets. That poor kid didn't seem to get what he was saying. 
he seemed overwhelmed by the screaming and crying. Soon enough, the small crowd of parents were surrounding him. Things started getting violent, and the kid had to escape. Me, I just stood there with Katie screaming in my arms, half hearing her, still in shock. I felt lost. I don't know what to do or where to go. Should I go home? Join the mob of angry parents and wailing children? Go to the police? What? My feet moved on their own, and I let my instincts take over. The door. I was leaving. It was better for Katie anyway, to keep her away from this place. I felt empty, and the smell of burnt plastic seemed even stronger as I stepped outside. When a hand gripped my arm, I jumped and yelled. It was the father with his child in his arms, sobbing in his shoulder. It turned out that his name was Jeremy. We exchanged phone numbers after he told me he would see to it to get an explanation of what happened. The rest of the day did not go well. I took two baths with Katie, but the death stench wouldn't leave. Eventually, she stopped crying and fell asleep out of pure exhaustion. As for me, even though I was completely off, even though I felt like I could fall asleep too, I couldn't. Every time I closed my eyes, I saw the lifelike eyes of Woody slip down his cheeks and burst, or his jaw hanging loose until it crashed on his lap. Just before my husband came home from work, I got a call from Jeremy. I remember slumping on my chair as he spoke, and a new set of hot tears streamed down my cheeks. My head hurt, and my eyes burned. I thought they might pop right out too. Jeremy said that the theater's management took the remaining few parents to see to the computer and handled the projection of the movie. Sure enough, we found a fiber stored in there, which streamed a homemade version of the movie. But the streaming led to nowhere. Jeremy's job was to handle computers, so he was able to look for it for those who couldn't. He tried tracing back where the streaming had come from. So basically, a hacker must have hacked a projection? Or something, as the story is saying, somebody must have hacked it with a stream. Something was very, very wrong. Who would do such a thing? I preferred a rational explanation to something of outer nature, so I opted to believe it was an employee who had access to the computer. Either way, other than the corrupted files the virus had left behind, there was no evidence of the disturbing footage we watched. It was gone. It was a little more than a year ago. Anything related to Toy Story has left my house. My husband, he wants to believe us, but I can tell he's skeptical. He says someone had to animate the thing, and people had to act out the voices. That takes a lot of dedication, because while the animation was constantly moving, the quality of the image and characters were as good as the original movies. He says that it's one hell of an effort to put into a one-time prank. He's right, though. I never heard of anything of the sort again. You'd think it would have come out if it had. I checked, and Jeremy did, too. There's no records of anything like it anywhere. Jeremy even tried to contact Disney and Pixar, but they never returned his calls or emails, as expected. The theater's closed now. I think someone sued them over what happened, but all the news mentioned was bankruptcy. To this day, I still get a whiff of burning plastic once in a while when Katie screams at night, suffering from those horrible nightmares. Oh my god. tell that definitely could ruin your childhood if something like that was ever made and some sick bastard would hack into the computering projection thingy I mean that's just a cruel prank to pull what the story had told us with this creepy pasta I mean jeez I cannot imagine how an alternate ending like that about Woody, Buzz, and all the characters we loved are incinerated by... 
I mean, oh my god. I'm left speechless. Uh, this is why you heavily requested to me, Nate the Reactor, for this, and uh, I appreciated that you suggested this idea for me to do a reaction to. So thanks for that, um, thanks for the request, and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you all enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And if you have any ideas or suggestions of what I should react to next, uh, leave a comment down below. And until then, folks, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell for more future videos. Until then, folks, stay tuned.